Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Aries Atelier. My name is Aries, and today I am posting a tutorial on how I made this tan faux leather tote bag. So for my interface here, I am actually using um, two millimeter thick carry board. I'm using the same kind of board for the base and the sides. And for the gussets, I'm actually using lightweight chip board. It's basically like thick paper. And I'm using exactly the same thing for the zipper. And for the dimensions, for the sides, I'm using 27 by 33 centimeter. For the base, it's 33 by 12 centimeters. The gusset, 29 by 16. And the zipper is 31 by 5 centimeter. For the lining, I'm actually using velvet fabric. It's sort of to give the idea of full suede. And the outer part, I'm actually using faux leather, or you can call it synthetic leather. It's basically the same thing, but the idea is vegan leather. That is, it doesn't come from an animal. It's made in factory. So I'm just going to set this out. And for our accessories, I have a zip stopper, the zip and the zipper pull. I've got my tag here and for the bottom of the bag i'm actually using bag bottom studs and just in case i have rivets rivets on standby so first of all i am going to use the interface i already cut out to just draw out the shapes i mean you could cut this out in smaller pieces but i'm just going to draw all the shapes and just handle this as one big sheet so I'm going to draw all this out because they're going to act as guides for me to apply my contact adhesive to it. And I'm using top bond here for people that weren't sure about the type of gum that I use. This is what I always use every time. So first is you apply um, not too much, but enough on every piece that is sort of laid out already. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I, I always pour it in a smaller bottle because I can't carry the, the jerry can around. So, and you're doing this on every piece. You're not just putting it on some and leaving the others. On every piece that is going to be wrapped with the full leather, you're going to rub it on all of them. Then you set them aside to dry a bit, not dry totally, just to a certain extent where it's not so sticky, but it's not fully dry. So we set this aside. And yes, I already sort of cut out the rough shape. And if you look closely, you will notice that I left enough space in between the pieces. You don't want to leave too little space. You need to leave enough. So when you cut it out, you need to have at least one centimeter allowance to wrap your interface. So I'm just going to spread this out in all the squares, sorry, and the rectangles. Not too much, just enough to cover the surface. And just like the first pieces that we'll put the gum on, we have to leave them to sort of breathe out. So here I have my leather roller, is what I use when I'm using this type of technique. So I did this one afterwards. These are the straps that I'm going to use. And I later cut this 15 by 20. It's sort of a last minute decision I made. So I'm gonna demonstrate how I'm going to use the roller. This piece is actually made for the pockets that I'm going to make inside. I wanted to do it as black before, but last minute I changed my mind that I wanted to do it in tan. So just the way I fixed that first one, I'm going to lay all the pieces that I applied gum to. So this is the idea of contact adhesive. You have to apply the glue to both sides, not just one side. Then when they dry a little, not totally, just a little, then you put them together. And I'm going to just roll them out because this action fuses the gum and this way you're sure that there's no going back. So I'm going to cut in between to separate all the pieces that have gums together to make individual pieces. You could do this piece by piece, but I wanted to be a little quicker. So I did everything together. So I'm just going to add extra glue around the frame. I like to put it in a small container to use as a, a palette. Yes. So I'm just going to apply all around because you have to 
also apply it on your um sorry on your interface yes so when you put it all around you let it sit a bit before folding everything in so for the front and the back piece you don't put it all around you just put it on the sides and the top and you leave the bottom open like that you don't fold that in you don't put gum and i'm going to show you why very soon and i'm doing the same thing for both pieces and this is why so for the base you just fold this the two longer sides you fold them in you don't fold the edge yet you just leave it open then you sort of layer it on the piece, on the side piece oh on the side piece But you're doing it in a way that the interfaces don't overlap it's just they just stay side by side so that when it folds like this you have like an angle and you do the same thing for both sides i didn't um, record this part the step before this i actually put a little gum under so that's why they sort of fuse together like this it's not just dry i put a little not too much just a little so that when i put them together it makes it easy for me to sew so i'm just going to clip this in so it doesn't shift while i'm sewing and you want to make sure that the pieces properly align because if they don't it's not going to be good you're going to have to start all over so just the layers that overlying you sew on it and this is a trick i learned from someone you sort of just use very little sewing machine oil when the gum if the gum doesn't dry properly or if the thread starts to cut I just put a little gum, a little oil, I'm sorry, and then that way you can just sew through it because someone complained about this some weeks ago to me and I said, okay, I'm going to put this in my video. So this is how you do the trick. So now we have one long piece of the front, the bottom and the back. And now we can go ahead to fold this in. So I'm just going to carefully wrap this on. And using this carry board, it gives the bag a very solid frame. If you want to make a soft tote, then you can jump this um, step. But if you want it to be solid and strong, then you can actually add the carry board. And I'm just going to go around this and wrap it. And I'm going to do the same thing for all the pieces that we have been applying gum to before we move to the next step. So a close up on how I do the edges. Just look closely I'm just going to show only this piece and I'm going to do the rest off camera so this way when you sew two pieces together it doesn't get too thick or too bulky it sort of lays flat on each other it doesn't matter what interface you're using this is the best way to wrap with some um, synthetic leather if you're using Ankara fabric or if you're using ordinary fabric it's still the same way you do this. Just be careful when you're trimming, not to trim too close to the edge. If not, it's going to look rough on the other side. So I'm just going to go do... I'm literally going to do the same thing for all the pieces. So now I'm just going to quickly put in the back bottom studs. There is no formula for this, there is no spacing, but since I'm using five back bottom studs, one has to be in the middle, then four at the edges. So you just have to make sure that what you do on the left side, you're going to do it on the right side. So I'm just going to use my owl to punch holes and sort of just stuff them through. So widen this hole a bit and just push it through. Then you open the insides and you hit it down a bit, not with too much force because if you hit it too hard, you're going to make the studs dent themselves. So just enough pressure to let it fold well. So now we're going, we're going back to the gussets and the pockets. I'm just sort of doing all this together because it's the same thing and I don't want this video to be too unnecessarily long. So I'm just going to apply some evo stick or contact glue 
in the insides of this I'm just going to spread it generously because here I'm going to gum them to the lining which is fabric and for fabric it's slightly different you want the gum to be a little wet so that when you put the material on it it actually soaks it and they sort of fuse together so instead of rubbing it on the fabric and rubbing it on the main piece you just put it on the piece itself because sometimes when you rub the contact adhesive on the fabric the fabric tends to soak it and from the other side you can actually see like the glue stains and trust me that is one thing you don't want to show in your work so if you're actually making this type of bag and you're using fabric that means that in the beginning when you're going to rub the glue on the carry board you're not going to do anything you're just going to put the fabric on it but in this case i'm just going to use my roller to make sure it really soaks it it's just turning white because it's how the material is it doesn't mean that it's soaking excessive it just means that the i don't know the, the fuzzy nature of the fabric is smoothing out so i'm just going to roll this in and i just went off camera and i sewed only one side of this so for the gussets i only sewed the shorter end and for the pockets i sewed the longer end so i'm just going to take my sharpest scissors and carefully trim this you want to be careful because if you get too close to the main piece you may actually mistakenly cut it so you just have to be careful the idea is it doesn't stick out when you're sewing it to the next piece but it's also sort of in that your thread gets to it i don't know you're going to see how that should make sense very soon so at the bottom of the the gusset i'm just going to mark out two centimeters in and we want to be careful with this because this is what's going to sort of create the concave um, curve inside i don't know i don't know how to explain it but yeah that is what creates the depth of the gussets so now you want to just carefully and very straight you want to cut through the four leather you want to cut through your interface you want to cut through your lining in one or a few clean cuts so we're going to do this one first before i get to the second piece so just carefully don't forget two centimeters so when you remove two centimeters you actually go back to the original 12 centimeters that actually makes up the base of the bag so this is how it's supposed to look when you sew it finally so i'm just going to do the second one quickly before we move back to the main piece and this is actually the final step for your corset you don't do anything else on this i'm not attaching d-rings or anything so i sort of jumped that one yeah i don't know what i was doing here i don't know what i was about to cut So I learned this trick from an older designer on how to fold the zips when you want to sew it instead of just tilting it. First you fold it down and then you have this point then you fold it to the back. I'm just going to let you watch what I just did. Down and then you fold that tip. So this way, the zipper track sort of turns on its own towards the edges. So these are the two pieces I already cut out for the zipper. And I'm just going to rub some contact glue. This bag takes a lot of glue, so you better have a lot of it on standby. It's, it's a lot of prepping. The bag itself is not that difficult, but the prepping is a lot. Prepping all the parts. So I'm just going to slather a sufficient amount of contact adhesive. And it's sort of like a lazy technique I'm using here but it always works every time and So I'm just going to lay it on the zipper itself 
but be careful don't press the whole thing because you still have wet glue in the back so you sort of have to make sure it's a little lifted and the same thing on the second side i left about one centimeter gap and you want to make sure that the two pieces are always aligned so your zip comes out straight so i'm going to carefully lift this and then put a little more adhesive just where the zip is before i move on to um, put on my velvet lining So I have a little piece here, just enough to cover the zip. It's easier to work with smaller pieces. So I always have them around before I start cutting from the main one. So I'm just carefully going to lay it on together. And this always works because the, the lining is fabric. So the moment you sort of glue it down and you sew it, you don't have to do anything else but if you're going to make the underside with full leather then you may have to double all the pieces that you cut then just sandwich them with the zip in between so what i did is i just sort of sewed around these edges and i left the other sides empty because that's the part we're going to sew to the bag itself and i just carefully trimmed out the fabric so that the zip will be able to open up so for the pocket here, I just marked out the main piece, that is the long piece itself. And carefully, I'm going to just use my um, owl to pierce through so that I can mark it. Because this is the wrong side, don't forget it. This is the wrong side. And we're just sort of trying to guess exactly where, because trust me, there is no other thing that works for me. This is the only way I can guess where I should sew the pocket in. And so we just align them with the four points. <laughs> four points then I just sew around this so we have our big piece here and I just sort of covered it in glue and this is what we're going to gum to the lining that we already marked out so now since we already have our shape and we already have our guides and okay I think it's shifted when I was sewing so I sort of just compensated for the tilt and just lay it out flat and then you want to flip it over and make sure that you don't have any wrinkle or creasing if not the fabric is going to glue down with the wrinkle so first i sort of have to use my hand to smoothing it out first before i start rolling it in so i'm just going to do the whole piece like that with my hands first So now I'm just going to trim out the edges, just the same way I did um, the gussets, carefully. I need to be careful with this so that I don't cut, I don't cut the piece itself. But in this case, I didn't sew the top of the bags because this is where we're going to sew the zipper too. So I'm just going to trim all around it. So the next step here would be to attach the straps. So my own system here is I measured six centimeters from the edge. There's no rule on this. Whatever, is, whatever is you're comfortable with is fine. But for me, six centimeters from the edge is what I liked. So that way it's not too wide or too narrow. I'm just going to clip this down. And before you sew, it's always good. Always check. So just before I start holding anything down permanently, I just sort of check. So this way, if there are any errors, you can just adjust it for the length of the strap and the weight of your placement. So I trimmed a little more from the fabric for the edge because I don't want the black fabric sticking out and the, because of the contrast, it's going to be really obvious. So now we're going to attach our zip to the top of your tote bag. So I'm just going to clip this down. Since this is 31, it means that we are going to have like two extra centimeters. That is one centimeter on either side. And I'm actually going to sew this once. And it's going to be really tricky because you don't want any mistake. This is the top of the bag. You want this to be neat. You want this to be nice. So if you're trying this with fabric or any other material, you need to be careful. So I'm just going to sew this quickly before we start closing the bag. So here I'm using my flat bed. 
I actually had someone um, text me on this and so far I have been using a sewing machine. It's been working for me. It's really good and it can really sew through thick, thick pieces. Like I'm still yet to get to the, to the maximum density. But so far it's been working for me. So thank you for reaching out to me and I hope to hear from you more. So now it's time for the last step, which is closing the bag. So basically we have to just easy just align the gussets with the edge i actually put a little glue for extra security because you don't want this shifting so normally i would just clip it but i, I had to be extra careful this bag is a present to someone and i didn't want to make a mistake so i'm just going to do the same thing for both sides if your calculations are right it should fit perfectly if this is off by half a centimeter at this point it would show So, with the last step being done, this is me successfully managing to finish a tote bag. So, if you like this tutorial, comment what you think about this down below. And thank you for watching this to the end. Let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in my next posts.